the ephemeris data seemed healthy enough. The storm, on the other hand, ripping across space from the comet's horizon, appeared hazardous. Transiting through the comet's coma, the shuttle vibrated slightly. Carl Regal knew the outgassing from the bright side lacked enough violence to cause any serious problems. The comet had just emerged from out of the frost line, so the sun's rays were not harsh enough to feed a fully-fledged tail. Manual control in 30 seconds, said the Ixion's chief navigator Jasmine Lambright. Standing by, said Regal. I have the ice hangar in sight. Be cautious of the rebound, Commander. The landing pads are inactive. Go in too hard and you'll bounce off all the way to Jupiter. Regal looked at his screen. I'm easing in at 2.7 Ks an hour. I have manual control. We've had two months of dead radio. Get a confirmation on conditions down there and get the hell back here. Regal intended to do just that, having spent the entire trip from Ceres in an anxious state. These kinds of jobs tended to rob him of sleep, especially when clients like GI Corp gave him little information to go by. He looked out into the black sky, hoping to get a glimpse of the spacecraft. He saw nothing. The Ixion orbited opposite his position, beyond the jagged horizon. The shuttle made contact with one of the three landing pads. Ice gravel and black sand scattered as the module bounced several times before sliding to rest a full three minutes later. With the locking mechanism on the landing pad inactive, the shuttle ended up precariously near the edge. 30 meters away, the cave entrance to the ice hangar cut a deep scar into the sloping surface. Lights illuminated the interior in stark juxtaposition to the frozen night of space. Regal suited up and exited the shuttle, hitting the slippery frost-covered gangway awkwardly, the warmth of his life suit sizzling icy metal. He hopped onto the gravel, which crumbled like charcoal, his boots sinking knee-deep into the surface. He continued hopping, a painstaking task, to the entrance, employing small soft pushes with his toes, calibrated by the pressure suit. Mechanical monsters lay dormant in the artificial 4000 Kelvin light. Excavators, drillers, nuke pumps. Along the left side wall, a tall cylinder towered above him, labeled with the red and white nuclear symbol. Power generators appear active, no sign of damage inside the hangar. Regal wiped frost from the yellow painted alloy of a mechanoid. No sign of any activity either. He headed for the airlock, a platform-sized elevator situated towards the rear of the cavity, below, safely embedded deep within the comet, the living and command quarters waited, like an ancient tomb. But the airlock control refused to comply. The lights were alive, but the ice-encrusted buttons cracked when pressed, doing nothing to activate the elevator. Airlock inoperable. Try hooking into the EAI. Ixion, I'm patching into the local interface. Regal uncovered the JX408 portal and plugged his optical line into it. Should synchronize any second now. He waited, studying the hangar around him, auditing the slumbering industrial space machines. Ixion, what's the EAI's name? The clarity and closeness of Chief Navigator Lambright's voice soothed his nerves. The environment control entity is called Hesper Copy 770. It's a clone of the master entity at the GI Corp HQ. Hesper Copy 770. Do you copy? Does anyone copy? Hello, somebody. Let me try the maintenance portal. Regal felt cold. He knew his life suit was good for another 10 hours, but the inactivity, plus the frozen stillness around him, sent chills along his skin. I've got a response. Is it from any of the crew? No, Hesper responded. Ask it what happened here. Where is everybody? It doesn't know. It's telling me that all systems are normal. It's asking me if something's wrong. Tell it to open the airlock. It's asking for authority. I'm punching in the codes as we speak. Regal looked up at the electronic eyes planted everywhere. Can it see me standing here? The platform shook and started to descend. It says it lost its audio, visual, and sensor array functionality. Speaking of which, we will lose contact once the airlock closes. I suggest you find... The massive doors grumbled shut above him. The pressurization process began sending steam at him like a hurricane. Icicles of carbon dioxide and methane boiled and evaporated instantly. Regal took advantage of the manual override to access hatchways. He kept the life suit on as a precaution, as he entered the staging hall. He noted nothing out of place. 
The storage compartments were neat and tidy. The low-grav training quarters were lit up but empty. He made a mental note to check the equipment in there, though his first priority was to re-establish contact with the Ixion. The command center was designed to withstand anything. The central nexus of the outpost would be the most likely place to seek refuge in case of a disaster. Regal made his way there, hopping and bouncing off the walls. He knew where to go. These GI Corp rigs were all based on the same template. He found the hatch sealed, yet its port window remained transparent. He peered inside only to find the unmistakable red liquid splattered over the white interior walls and trim. He expected something like this to some degree but felt totally unprepared for the grisliness he faced.